Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, we will have a conversation, uh, conversation interview with the uh, Asif Luqman Qazi, the member of Shura uh, of Jamaat Islamic Pakistan. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, first of all, we would like to hear from you about uh, your attendance to this conference and uh, the duty of this conference. Could you please? Uh, uh, this conference uh, is uh, um, organized every year by Majma al Taqrib Bain al Madahib, and I think uh, this is the need of the hour because in the Middle East, uh, especially uh, in Muslim countries, we see a lot of uh, crisis and a lot of issues and a lot of uh, bloodshed going on. There are civil wars going on, and there is uh, there are uh, governments who are um, who are involved in oppression and tyranny. So all these problems, I think, can be resolved through dialogue. And uh, use of force is not the way uh, in this time and period and in this century. Uh, dialogue is required. Uh, these are political problems. These are not religious problems. And political problems uh, should be addressed politically. And the way is uh, dialogue and reconciliation. Thank you. And secondly, we would like to hear about the Jama Islami of Pakistan. Uh, what time it was established and uh, what is the what what is uh, his uh, current uh, situation, political situation? Uh, Jamaat Islami Pakistan was uh, established in 1941 uh, by Imam Sayyid Abul Ala Al Maududi. Uh, before the partition of India into uh, Indo-Pak subcontinent into India and Pakistan. Uh, the, the idea was that Islam is a system of life and Islam is a comprehensive code of life that provides uh, us teachings in every walk of life uh, and also in political life. So this was the basic idea. It is the same uh, ideology that is uh, put forward by other intellectuals in the same time, uh, in, just like Imam Hassan al-Banna and uh, Sayyid Qutb and others. And uh, several Islamic movements were started in that period. Uh, Jamaat Islami Pakistan has adopted a democratic way. It's part of the parliament in Pakistan. We take part uh, in elections. And we want to change the society through uh, da'wah, da'wah ilallah, calling towards Allah uh, th through reform, our own reform, through so society reform, and through democratic change uh, through elections. This is the way, and alhamdulillah, uh, we have uh, members in the parliament, we have presentation in the parliament. How many members or how many percentage of the vote uh, do the Islamic Jama of Islamic of Pakistan has? At the moment, uh, we uh, we have a few members in the central parliament, and we have we are in coalition government in uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. That is the Peshawar region. And also, we would like to hear a, uh, your opinion about what happened recently in Tajikistan. The Tajik government. Uh, banned the only Islamic uh, party in the uh, Soviet Union, uh, which uh, legally uh, he was participating in the political life of the Tajikistan, and third time they were member of the parliament, and they had a uh, deputed, uh, I mean a member of parliament in the parliament of Tajikistan, but recently they were banned and called this uh, party as a terrorist organization and almost 200 uh, leader of this party uh, been jailed uh, and arrested uh, without having any proof. We would like to hear your opinion uh, about uh, this event. The imperialist powers, uh, when they saw that there is awakening in the Muslim societies, they want to control the Muslim societies and they want political control, they want economic control, and they want uh, military control. And their way is, their approach is to 
have oppression governments, uh, governments who use oppression, who use tyranny, and who use violence against their own people in alliance with the imperialist powers. Uh, this is unfortunate, but I think this cannot, uh, this is not sustainable, uh, because in this 21st century, uh, the media is open, there are, the world is watching everything, it's a, become a global village. So nothing can be concealed, not, nothing is hidden, and everything sooner or later, uh, I am hopeful that uh, these uh, oppression uh, governments they will be removed by the uh, by the people through awakening through ma uh, through uh, mass awakening and uh, this uh, oppression is not sustainable do you think it was the the right decision to ban the only islamic uh, uh, moderate party uh, toward of uh, they are claiming that uh, they are fighting again against the terrorists and that's why they are banning the islamic party is it, uh, is, is it was the right decision at this time? The term terrorism is uh, used against all Islamic movements uh, without, uh, and it's a biased terminology. It's a terminology that is introduced by uh, the Americans and uh, they, they call everyone who abides by the teachings of his religion, his faith, uh, who uh, who says uh, his prayers five times a day, they call him a terrorist. This is uh, uh, a biased approach and this is totally wrong. This is uh, totally against uh, any civilized norm. And also recently, uh, two years ago, I think, uh, the Tajik government uh, banned the, uh, the youth under the 18 years, years off, all the, they cannot attend the mosque. They said it's, uh, it's because to prevent uh, radicalization among the young people or uh, students. Uh, do you think the mosque uh, um, uh, create a radicalization or bring a radicalization to society? No, faith, basically, people who say that uh, Islam or any faith for that matter radicalizes people they are confused they are they have totally misunderstood faith faith actually softens the heart it creates it brings compassion it brings mercy in one's heart and this is a to totally wrong concept that people will be radicalized when someone goes before allah someone goes before god he uh, this creates a, a relationship of mercy and compassion with the creation of Allah, with other human beings. So uh, in order to control radicalization, it is necessary to provide religious freedoms. And it is absolutely uh, one of the basic fundamental rights of every human being to practice his religion uh, according to his faith. Uh, currently, we see the Islamic society in the toughest period of uh, his life where we are seeing the conflict in Yemen and uh, Iraq, uh, Palestine, uh, Syria, also in Afghanistan. Uh, what do you think, how uh, the, uh, the Islamic society could uh, come over to all these problems? Uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, solution? Solution is constitutional governments and rule of law. If there are constitutional governments in these countries, uh, everyone will abide by justice, everyone will abide by rule of law. And uh, I think the, uh, there, there, there are conflicts between Muslim countries, and these conflicts can be resolved through dialogue. If Muslim uh, rulers, if Muslim governments can go to Washington, can go to Moscow and seek help against each other, why can't they talk to each other? Why can't they visit Tehran and uh, Riyadh, for example, or Islamabad or Istanbul, for example, and uh, try to resolve their differences among themselves and to try to resolve the conflicts through dialogue?
So we had constitution uh, government in Tajikistan. We also have a constitution government in uh, Syria or, or as well in uh, uh, Yemen. But uh, what's happening on the, on all this of country? We see the uh, destabilization and the war. Actually, a constitution is uh, present in writing and it's uh, present somewhere in the library, but it is not implemented. It's a joke with its own, his own people. He's violating the constitution and uh, this is a mockery of uh, constitution and civilized. Whatever is agreed in the constitution has to be implemented. And uh, uh, like I said that in this age, uh, the whole world is watching and the whole world is uh, viewing what is going on. So sooner or later these uh, oppressing governments will have to change their policies. The, another question is uh, the Afghanistan, uh, Afghanian government. They're blaming uh, that uh, Pakistan uh, government supporting the Taliban or other uh, terrorist organization to create destabilization uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, do you think uh, they have any pro or what uh, could be the solution for this problem? Be because it's uh, been continuing uh, almost, I don't know, four years or more than uh, half of uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, they are like twin brothers and uh, they are totally interdependent. It is not possible that there is war in one country and uh, there is peace in the other. If there is war in one country, the other country will definitely be affected. Uh, so we call upon both the governments of Pakistan and Afghanistan to resolve their uh, conflicts through dialogue. And we, we should encourage uh, all the Afghan factions to sit together and uh, find a way to, because Afghan people are tired now. They have suffered a lot for several decades. They have suffered and both Afghanistan and Pakistan, they need peace now. And peace can be brought when there, are, uh, uh, there is confidence building between the two governments. And uh, I, uh, I understand that some progress has been made between the governments and uh, we should encourage the Afghan factions to resolve their uh, conflict among themselves without any outside intervention. Last, we would like to hear uh, your wishes for our audience and Tajik and post-Soviet countries, uh, youth people, which mo most of them right now joining the ISIS and uh, uh, Daesh in Iraq and Afghanistan because of uh, They don't have a uh, religious right in, in their country. They are blaming that we cannot uh, freely attend mosque or participate in uh, their or religious practice. That's why they are, uh, as a demonstration, joining the extremist group. Uh, what uh, is your uh, wish for them? Uh, my message to uh, the Tajik people is to uh, remain steadfast and remain firm, but remain peaceful as well. Don't give any opportunity to the enemy and to the enemy of Islam and Muslims to crack down upon you. A uh, peaceful struggle is the way. And as Quran says, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا هِيَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى so uh, we should uh, we should remain with the uh, path of justice with the path of peace and with the path of peaceful struggle and we are hopeful inshallah this is a temporary phase in history uh, we are passing through a difficult time and inshallah we will pass through it and uh, our nations will come resilient i am hopeful that this whole region of muslims from Pakistan to Afghanistan to Tajikistan, Uzbekistan and all the Central Asia. This will become uh, a strong region of, for economic prosperity, inshallah. And our future is very bright. As uh, the famous poet Iqbal al Lahori said, uh, As Hindu, Samarkandu, Iraqo, Hamadan, Khiz, 
از خواب گران خیز با خرق و سجاد و شمشیر و سنان خیز از خواب گران خیز معمار حرم باز به تعمیر جهان خیز از خواب گران خواب گران خواب گران خیز so this is my message to the people of Tajikistan. Thank you very much. Thank you.